Hi everyone. So in a recent video, I shared with you my favorite all green houseplants. And so it only seems fair that today I share with you my favorite variegated houseplants because, you know, I got to show all the plants the love. So we're going to be taking a look at, I believe, 25 of some absolutely gorgeous variegated houseplants today. And they are from all kinds of different genuses. And actually you guys, some of these plants I'm gonna be showing you today, I've never shown you before, but also some of the genuses of plants that I'm gonna be showing you today, they're from genuses we've never talked about before at all. So lots of exciting things going on. So let's just go ahead and jump right into our first plant. And I am going to remember to shift this way real quick so that I have room this time to flash them up on screen because I forgot in that all green plants video. All right, you guys. So the first plant I want to take a look at today is just an absolutely stunning plant. I adore this plant. Maybe one day I will be able to own this plant, but this is one of the most expensive plants out there. I mean, they go for thousands and thousands of dollars. So, you know, probably not gonna be happening anytime soon, but still one of my favorite variegated plants. And that is the Philodendron Ilsamanii. And look how gorgeous this plant is. Now, this plant does have stable variegation. And actually you guys, a lot of the plants on this list today have stable variegation. There aren't too many with unstable variegation. So that's definitely a plus. And I'll let you know which ones have which as we go along. But this plant is absolutely beautiful. I love the type of kind of mottled, speckled variegation on it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of my Philodendron Paricio Verde plant. The only difference though, is that with that Paricio Verde, a lot of times the variegation kind of ebbs and flows. And a lot of it has to do with the temperature with that plant, whereas this one stays relatively strong as long as you're giving it like the right level of light. And if this plant does start to put out green leaves, it will come back. Like I said, it's stable variegation. It doesn't fully revert, it will come back. But let's go ahead and take a look at our next plant. And this is a variegated banana tree, AKA a musa. And these are just so beautiful, you guys. I can't, like the first time I ever saw one of these, I was like, that's not real. Like, that's not real. There's no way that's real. I mean, it doesn't look real. It looks fake, but it is not fake. And it is absolutely beautiful. It looks like kind of like it's been a watercolor painting, right? Like you had a, a white leaf and somebody went in there with like shades of green and water painted onto those leaves. I mean, I just, every time I see them, I'm just like, oh my gosh, they're so, so gorgeous. Now, last time I checked, they were also so, so expensive. So yet another one that I probably won't be owning anytime soon. But you guys should be aware that this is unstable variegation. So it is possible for this to revert back to a solid green banana tree, which, you know, solid green banana trees are great. I own one, but for the price that this plant typically goes for, I'm not sure I'm willing to pay that amount and have the risk of it going completely green when the all green version is way cheaper, but definitely a beautiful plant. Definitely would love to own one if I just had expendable income like that, but I don't. But moving on, this next plant is from a genus of plants that we have never looked at before. And I'm not going to attempt to say the scientific name out loud. I will flash it up on screen for you. But this is related to the banana tree we just looked at. And as you can see, this is a much smaller leaf. It might be kind of hard. There's not really a good scale reference in this picture. If I can find a better picture with something that gives you a scale reference, I'll flash it up here but definitely beautiful plant. The patterning of the variegation on these leaves kind of reminds me of like my Tenanthe luberciana. We've got kind of those bigger like sections and striped kind of looking sections of variegation on these leaves. Just beautiful, beautiful. Even the shape of the leaf and kind of the length and size kind of reminds me of that Tenanthe a little bit. This is almost like if you crossed like a banana tree with a Tenanthe in a way, but definitely gorgeous variegation. It's definitely got like a harder edge on that variegation than that banana tree we looked at, which is why I said that one kind of reminds me of like watercolor painting because it's just got such soft edging on that variegation. And you guys, that's one of the things that I love about variegated plants. There's just so many different types of variegation. There's so many different like styles, if you will, like I just described like that hard edge versus that soft edge. I mean, you have no idea how hard it was for me to put this list together because really like this list could have been like a thousand plants long, but we don't got time for that today. But definitely a beautiful one, a new genus for you guys to have on your radar if you didn't already know about it. And you know, I, I'm thinking maybe we'll start seeing more of these kind of pop up in like cultivation and for sale in your just regular garden centers. Oh, and before I forget, this is one of the ones where I was not 100% positive if the variegation was stable or not. 
but because it is related to the banana tree, I'm kind of leaning towards it's not. But then again, because that, it reminds me so much of like that Tenanthe luberciana, and that is stable variegation. I don't know, there's a possibility this could be stable. I'm willing to bet it's more stable than the banana tree one. I just have a hunch, but let's move on to our next plant. And actually let's look at some calatheas next. I absolutely love my calathea plants. You guys know that. And one of the reasons I love them is because they have pattern gene variegation, which means that variegation stays exactly how it is. It's not going to go away. It's 100% stable. It doesn't really change drastically or anything with how much light it gets or anything like that. I absolutely love Calathea for that reason. And it's probably no shock to those of you who have been around for a while that the first one I wanna take a look at is my white fusion Calathea. I love my white fusion Calathea. And it was the stunning variegation on this plant combined with the fact that the backside of the leaves are purple that led to me buying this plant in the first place. I mean, I turned the corner in the plant store and was like, what is that beautiful thing? That plant is coming home with me. I just think it's gorgeous. Gorgeous, 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 white, white variegation, but stable variegation. And that's the thing. If you guys remember, the whiter you see variegation on most plants, so especially if it's labeled an albo plant, for example, that tends to be the most unstable variegation there is out there. It's really hard to get white, white on plants and it be stable, but there are some plants out there like this white fusion in which it happens. And so just a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. I love the shape of the leaves. I love that it has like kind of that ruffled look to the edge, like it's like a wavy leaf. It's just a beautiful, beautiful plant. Now, next I wanna look at a Calathea that I don't own. And honestly, I kind of had forgotten about this one. And then when I was thinking and kind of looking through old photos that I've saved from other, you know, Instagram people I follow and other YouTube people I follow and things like that, I saw this one and was like, oh my gosh, I completely forgot about this Calathea and it is so beautiful. And of course now I just wanna go buy one, but I'm not buying one because I'm still saving up to get my top wishlist plants. But I seriously, I came this close you guys yesterday to ordering one online, but I didn't do it, but here it is. So this is a Calathea, oh, Fasciata. Oh my gosh, I totally almost just blanked on the name. Calathea Fasciata. And look how beautiful this plant is. This is one of the like, glossiest leafed calatheas that I have seen. And it is just absolutely beautiful. Now, also super round-ish shaped leaves. Honestly, this kind of reminds me a little bit of like the calathea orbifolia, but just darker. And then it does have that purplish reddish backside to the leaves like a lot of other calathea do, but that the orbifolia doesn't have. So definitely reminiscent of that orbifolia, but just once again, a stunning, stunning, beautiful plant. So the last Calathea I wanna look at, and honestly, once again, you guys, I could have put like so many Calatheas on this list and it was really hard narrowing it down. I, I told myself, I was like, you're putting three, that's it. You're maxing out at three. This is not gonna be another Calathea video. <laughs> but the Macoyana, the Calathea Macoyana, I mean, what is not to love about the patterning on this leaf? I mean, it's nicknamed the peacock plant for a reason. It kind of is reminiscent a little bit of like peacock feathers, but I absolutely love it. And one of my favorite things about this plant is that the variegation is maintained when you look at it from the backside of the leaf. So even though it does have a reddish purplish under, or under, let me try and talk today, you guys, a reddish purplish backside to the leaf, even though it has that, it's not as opaque. It's not as solid as it is on a lot of other Calathea. So when you look at the backside of the leaf, the light still shines through that and you still see the patterning of that variegation that's on the front side of the leaf. But now it's like almost even more beautiful because you've got like a completely different color look to it when you look at the backside, but just a beautiful, beautiful, stably variegated plant absolutely adore it. But moving on to our next plant, I do have a syndapsis on this list. It is probably not the syndapsis that you might think. It's actually one we have never looked at together before. And this is the syndapsis maorii, I believe is how it's pronounced. And I just think this is beautiful. And I am typically not into a lot of the half moon variegations like you're seeing here where one side of the leaf is green and the other side is like all white. Typically not my like jam, if you will. I just, I just see like most plants that are like that, that side that is all white just like melts away like that. And then you're left with this like weird looking leaf. But on this plant, because these leaves are pretty thick, 
It does have that blister variegation as well. That's what's giving you kind of that speckled kind of silverish look on the other sides of the leaves. I feel like this white kind of lasts a little bit longer. And this basically kind of reminds me of like if you took a Syndapsis exotica and you like crossed it with an albo plant, right? Now let's be clear about one thing. Definitely not stable variegation, not even remotely stable variegation. But even if this reverted, I wouldn't mind having this as a reverted plant because I just think that darker kind of green with the blister variegation that's what we're used to seeing on like the Exotica or the Silvery Anne or the Argerius version of this plant, I still think that would be absolutely gorgeous. So I would not mind owning this one even knowing that it could revert because I think this would look beautiful either way, either this way or just with its plain regular blister variegation. But let's go ahead and take a look at another plant that has some of that big chunky sectoral variegation on it because once again, as I said before, I'm not very into that kind of variegation, but I just am in love with this next plant and it, it's been on my wish list for a while. Those of you who've been around for a while will know that, but this is the Philodendron Red Anderson and I absolutely love this plant. I mean, what's not to love? I like tricolored plants, first of all, in case you guys didn't already know that or haven't figured it out just by watching my videos in the past. I love tricolored plants and this is one of the most beautiful ones. I love the colors red, white, and gray together. And this plant does, that gray does come as kind of a mixture of the colors in the plants. It's not like it's just naturally like gray, if that makes sense. But I just think it is absolutely beautiful. And this is unstable variegation. So this could revert. I have not been able to find any photos out there for what these look like when they revert because my biggest concern with some of these philodendron like the pink princess, the whole reason I'm not really into that pink princess is because I don't like what it looks like when it actually reverts. It kind of takes on like a brownish sort of appearance on a lot of the leaves and I just don't like that. And I would really like to know what this one looks like. But once again, I haven't been able to find any pictures anywhere, which actually might lead us to believe that perhaps this is a little bit more stable than say the pink princess, but who knows? But still, beautiful plant. Let's move on to our next one though. And this is gonna be a type of ficus that we have not looked at before. And I believe this is called a ficus septica. Hold on you guys, let me double check my notes real quick. Yes, okay, for some reason that just sounded wrong when I said it out loud, but this is a ficus septica variegata. So it is a variegated type of ficus, but it is a different type of ficus than we have looked at before. So this is in the same genus, which is ficus, as say your ficus elasticas, but there is actually a subgenus or not a subgenus. There are several subgenuses when it comes to the ficus genus. And this is in a different one of those subgenuses than the ficus elastica is. But this is a beautiful plant with this white and green variegation. Once again, we've got kind of like the speckledy, splotchy type variegation going on, but still just kind of has some of those bigger chunk vibes to it, if that makes sense. And honestly, this kind of reminds me, like the way this leaf looks reminds me of variegated hibiscus that I saw in Hawaii. And I forget, I forget what the variety of that type of hibiscus is. If I can find it, I'll flash it up on screen for you. But yeah, it definitely reminds me a lot of that. Now, speaking of variegated hibiscus, Next up on my list is my Salsa Dancer Hibiscus. Absolutely love this plant. This is hands down one of my favorite variegated plants. And once again, try colored. We have the whites, we have the greens, we have the pinks, and they come in differently all year round. So over the summer, this plant went way, way, way more green than anything else because the sun was not coming direct in through my southern window. So it wasn't getting direct sunlight. Now it is getting direct sunlight. So look here at how much pink is coming back on this plant. And that is because these leaves are finally getting direct light. They looked green, they looked green and white. And then once that direct light was hitting and the longer it hits throughout the day, the more pink these leaves have gotten. And no, it's not sun stressing on this plant. I looked it up, it's not sun stressing. This is just part of the variegation on the plant. But the higher the light is, obviously, the more variegation shows up on this plant. It is stable variegation. It's not going anywhere. Unless it's not getting enough light, then yeah, it might disappear. But the second you put it back in bright light, this is what happens and it just starts to look absolutely beautiful again. Love, love, love this plant. But next up, another plant that we have not looked at before, and this is what is called commonly spiral ginger. 
Its scientific name is another one of those ones I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce for you guys, but I will flash it up on screen for you. And this is the variegated version of this plant. And I really do love white and green variegation, like just together when it is very like stark. So like a lot of white, or even if it's a lot of green, but then it's like very like solid. It's not super, you know, modeled or things like that. I don't know if I'm making any sense here. When there's a lot of contrast between the two, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And this definitely has that kind of contrast. I think this is a gorgeous plant. Now I was having a hard time finding out if this variegation was stable or not, but I did a little research. This is in the same family of plants as our Calatheas, our Marantas, our Stromanthes, our Tenanthes. And that leads me to believe that this is probably stable variegation. And these plants, you guys, like as they grow, they get very sculptural. And here's a picture of one that's a little bit more mature. And you can see they do get kind of like a tree-like appearance to them, but they have very thin stems and I don't know, trunks, whatever you want to call them, but they do get woody, kind of like on your ficuses, if you think about it that way, but definitely stays a little bit narrower from what I've seen. But as they grow out, they, they do all kinds of crazy things. They'll like grow in kind of like a half moon shape, a spiral type shape until the leaves stems or the plant stems or the plant's trunk. I'm not sure what to call it on this one, but until they mature and get like woody, they kind of do like these crazy things. So you do have to kind of use supports on this plant, especially in the beginning so that things aren't just flopping over, you know, onto the floor or things like that, but can get very beautiful and very sculptural as they mature. Kind of reminds me a little bit of if anybody has ever owned the Dracaena that is commonly referred to as the Song of India, those kind of get kind of that crazy twisty shape going on as they mature as well. That's kind of what this reminds me a little bit of. But once again, a stunningly beautiful variegated plant. And the next plant I want to take a look at is another one that I don't really talk about that much. We didn't, I did mention it and I actually I think I mentioned it in the all green plant video. I did. I did, it was in my all green plant video, but guess what? The variegated version of it's gonna be in this video because I think it's beautiful. And this is what is known as the variegated bird's nest fern. And look how gorgeous this is. And this variegation is definitely different than what we've looked at so far. So this is what I would call like line variegation. And this looks like somebody took like, you know, a green marker and drew these fine little lines all over the leaves on this plant. But I think it's absolutely beautiful. Now I have seen a range of variegation when you look at these plants, like some of them look more green, some of them look way white. And so I'm thinking that this is having to do with how much light they're getting, which also leads me to believe that there's a possibility that this is stable variegation. Now, this is another one of those where I couldn't find out for sure, but just looking at the type of variegation and looking what I'm seeing in terms of like, like I said, the ranges of how much green there is versus white, I really think it is stable variegation and I definitely think it is absolutely stunning. But let's take a look at a Syngonium next. And I had a hard time deciding what Syngonium I was gonna put on this list today, you guys. But I had to go back to my tried and true. It was one of the first Syngoniums I had ever seen that really like got me into Syngoniums in the first place. And that is the Syngonium Batik. And this is one of those Syngoniums where that patterning on that leaf, the veining, the white outline for that variegation tends to stay around like pretty well. And what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is on a lot of Syngonium, leaves will come in and they will have kind of a patterning like that, but then as the leaves mature, the patterning goes completely away. So for example, on my Syngonium white butterfly, that's what happens. The leaves come in, they have a patterning kind of similar to this, but then as the leaf matures, it turns like a solid, like light, light green, almost whitish color, hence why it's called a white butterfly. But on this plant, it stays relatively strong. And I just think it is beautiful. I love like kind of, when it's variegation that looks like it's just veining on the plant, even though it's not actually following the veining on the plant, I really like that kind of variegation a lot. And added bonus, this is stable variegation, so it shouldn't disappear on you. And up next, I wanna look at a Schismata glottis, and it is not actually the Schismata glottis I own, even though you guys know I love that plant. I love the variegation on that plant as well. But I really, really do love the Schismata glottis Wallichii variegation because it is so, different. It is so different because it is just that outline that follows the leaf, that lighter color that is just like a single line. Like I said, this is the best way I can describe it. It's like an outline on the leaf. Very different than what we've looked at so far today. Very different than you really see on a lot of plants. And I just, I love it. I think it's beautiful. I would love to own one of these. I actually came across one 
oh, let's see, maybe a couple of months ago now, they started popping up in a lot of stores in my area. I almost bought one, you guys. I really did. I really did. You want to know why I didn't buy it? I flipped that leaf over at the store and there were thrips on it. And I sure as heck was not going to be bringing thrips back into my house. I've only ever had them once. Ironically enough, on the Syngodium white butterfly we were just talking about, I got rid of them relatively easy and I am not going through that again because those are some hard pests to get rid of. So it wasn't happening, didn't buy it, but definitely love this plant. I love how unique it looks because of this variegation. And so, you know, one day, one day, hopefully I'll own one of these. But up next, I want to look at a Peperomia. You guys know I love my Peperomias, but when it comes to variegation on Peperomias, the one that I love the most is actually my Peperomia Picolobanda. So these leaves are a slightly kind of less green shade than a lot of the other Peperomias I own, but then they have this beautiful red variegation, lined variegation, veined variegation, however you want to call it or consider it, on it and they have much smaller leaves than any of my other peperomias as well. They just end up looking like this very cute, adorable little miniature plant and I absolutely love it. And it's stable variegation, so once again, added bonus. But up next, let's take a look at another plant that we have never looked at together before. And let me check my notes. Uh, what was this one? It is called scientifically a Christia obcordata, I believe is how you pronounce it. And this plant is just crazy looking, crazy cool looking, I guess I should say. And actually the variegation on this plant reminds me a little bit of the Piccolo Banda. You've got that green leaf and you've got that darker kind of almost reddish lined variegation going on it. But this plant is just so beautiful, quirky, and unique. It looks like little like, I don't know, butterflies or birds because of the shapes of these leaves and kind of how they look like they're just floating in air. Just a super fun plant. I don't know why we don't see these more often anywhere. Definitely would love to own one of these. Very, very sculptural, very, very beautiful, totally stable variegation too. So it's not going anywhere. Absolutely love the look of this plant. But I'm just curious, how many of y'all like the look of this plant? I think it's really cool. Comment down below and let me know what you think. But up next, I wanna take a look at a couple of succulents. And yes, I said succulents. There are a lot of variegated succulents out there. And I have been really into a lot of Haworthias lately. I don't know what it is, you guys. Like I got my Haworthia retusa and I love it. And then I started seeing all these other kind of similar Haworthias and I thought they were cute too. And then I came across this one and I was like, oh my gosh, that is going in this video. Look at this. I don't even know exactly what type of variegation this is, but this is like a multicolored plant, like a rainbow plant. I don't know, it's super cute. So I saw this and I was like, that is amazing. I would love to own one of these. It's kind of got a weird name. I'll throw it up here and I don't know, I guess the guy who discovered this name was Peter. That's my guess why it's got Peter in the name, but definitely a adorable little plant. And from what I can tell you guys, most of the variegated Haworthia seem to be stable variegation. Now, once again, I couldn't definitively find anything that said for sure, but I did find several places where people were saying that it's pretty stable, that they haven't had problems with any kind of reversion or anything like that. So that sounds pretty solid to me in, in terms of you're not gonna have to worry about reversion with this plant. But I do wanna look at one other Haworthia as well, and here it is, and oh my gosh. So this one looks like an Albo Haworthia to me because of all this white. So once again, I was like, is this going to be stable? I looked around, I asked around, and it seems like it's relatively stable, which was shocking to me, but definitely a beautiful, beautiful plant. I wouldn't mind owning either of these or both of these at some point. But next up, we could not complete a list of my favorite variegated plants without including what is commonly known as the Mandula pothos. So this is an Epiprimnum aureum Mandula, and I love this plant. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is actually stable variegation, by the way. This was a sport that popped up from a Marble Queen pothos, and cultivators were able to kind of isolate that and rebreed it, if you will, recreate it over and over and over again, you know, in a lab setting until they got it to a situation where it is stable now. And I absolutely think this variegation is beautiful. It's kind of a combination of, you know, sectoral type variegation. Then you've got that speckling variegation like you're used to seeing on like a Marble Queen Pothos. But one of the things I really like about the Mandula is the leaf shape. It's got kind of a rounder, shorter leaf shape that then comes to a point versus that kind of longer teardrop shape that you see on a Marble Queen Pothos. But absolutely gorgeous. It's on my wish list as well. But let's move on to our next plant. And actually, you guys, these next two plants both kind of 
remind me of something. I'll explain as we go along. But this first one is yet another plant that we have never looked at before. I'm not gonna try to pronounce this because once again, I feel like I'm gonna mess it up. But this is what the plant is and it's commonly referred to as a, I believe, African embossed plant, probably because this plant looks like it's embossed with like silver. So this plant reminds me a little bit of if you took like, say some type of alocasia or maybe some type of philodendron and combined it with like the aluminum plant. So the Pilea cadirii. It looks like it's got kind of that silver blister type variegation like that aluminum plant has. And I just think this is a stunningly gorgeous plant. Now I will let you know, this is stable variegation. However, with this plant, kind of like I talked about with my white butterfly syngonium, where it looks variegated when it comes in and then it goes solid, this plant will lose that variegation. or not lose it, it fades, right? But it takes a while. From what I understand, it doesn't fade away until the plant becomes like fully mature. I've been told that that can take up to five years. And even then it's still there, it's just fainter. It's not as much contrast as you see here between the variegation and the leaf color. But I just think this is absolutely gorgeous. Now, another plant that has kind of that aluminum look variegation to me. And so this one kind of reminds me of if you took the aluminum plant and crossed it with like my Begonia maculata. And this is what is known as Begonia Catherine II. Once again, I'm sure somebody named Catherine was involved in the hybridization of this plant or they were married to somebody named Catherine or had a daughter named Catherine. I don't know how these names come about, but that's usually how it happens. But I love this. This is another type of cane begonia like my begonia maculata. This has been on my radar for over a year now. Steve's Leaves has it for sale. I would love to own one of these. If I do get another cane begonia at some point, this is the one I wanna have. But like I said, I feel like it reminds me a lot of that patterning from that aluminum plant in terms of the way that silver variegation is on this plant, but absolutely gorgeous. Now this next plant I wanna take a look at might throw some of y'all like into shock because I really never talk about these plants. So this is a type of jewel orchid and I will flash the scientific name up on screen for you. And that's right, I said orchid. I don't really talk about orchids on my channel very much. And I'm not really that into the regular orchids that you see like, you know, at your grocery store, your garden centers, like everywhere, everybody has these orchids or they have a fake version of the orchid, you know, not a, not a real plant. And I just am not a big fan of those because when they're not in bloom, I don't really like how the foliage looks. And at certain points in the year, you're not gonna have blooms. But jewel orchids are different. I love the foliage on jewel orchids. So if I ever do get an orchid, it will probably be a jewel orchid or it will definitely be a jewel orchid. But I love how this has like, once again, this variegation that almost looks like it's glowing, first of all, but very fine lines that produce like the look of this veining on this leaves. And I just think this is beautiful. So if this wasn't blooming, I wouldn't mind looking at this. I think that's gorgeous, even if it wasn't in bloom. Now, once again, I don't have any experience with orchids, you guys. That's why I never talk about them on my channel. But those of you out there, because I know there are some of you, one of you owns like a ton of orchids. We were talking about it in the comments on a video a while back. If you're watching right now, let me know if jewel orchids are more difficult, less difficult, equally difficult as your just kind of generic orchids that you see sold everywhere or not, because I would like to know any tips you can provide that will help me decide if I'm going to get one of these at some point in the future or not. But we only have two more plants to look at today. And I kind of feel like these ones have kind of a similar style of variegation, if you will. And the first one is actually a peace lily domino. So this is a spathophyllum. Now, variegated spathophyllums typically are unstable, but this variegation tends to be a bit more stable than say on your spathophyllum Picasso, which is the one that kind of looks like an elbow piece lily. And so that is one of the appeals to this is that it is more stable, but I just like the look of this variegation. It's kind of that speckly look, a little bit of a streaked look in it, and it can vary drastically. So I did find this picture from someone where he, this guy basically said that sometimes they just surprise you and they can go really, really light. And as you can see, super light here compared to what I was showing you before. But either way, I like both of these. I think they're both gorgeous. However, as much as I love this style of variegation on this plant, I love it even more on our next plant. And that is the Monstera Thai Constellation. And you guys, this might just be becoming my favorite Monstera there is out there. And there's starting to pop up more and more in more places. I want one so bad. The price is still pretty high on these. So I'm kind of waiting until it comes down a little bit, but I just think it's absolutely beautiful. And it has that similar kind of speckled variegation. It does get some like larger chunks from time to time, 
but just a beautiful, beautiful plant. I love it. And this is stable variegation, you guys. The tissue culture process, they've gotten that all like down solid to the point where this plant should not revert on you. Now you will see them labeled a lot as like low variegation, medium variegation, high var variegation. As long as there's still variegation on there, you're gonna have variegation. I do believe I've heard from people that light does kind of play a significant role in this one though. So if you wanted to increase that variegation, definitely get it into a brighter location. But all around, I just think this is a beautiful, beautiful variegated plant. It is definitely one of my favorite variegated plants. And so I hope you guys have enjoyed looking at all these beautiful variegated plants with me today. If so, please be sure to click that like and or subscribe button down below. And let me know what some of your favorite variegated plants are if they weren't featured on this list today. I'd love to chat with you about it. And if you are interested in all green plants, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I did recently do a video on my favorite all green plants. And if you haven't had a chance to check that out yet, you can check it out next right here. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Aloha!